speaking. It is a perfect scenario for God's supernatural power. So the first if Joseph was not fearful. Lord knew that Joseph was fearful. He didn't know what his future's going to look like. He didn't know if it was the right thing for him to take a Mary as a wife or she He was more going towards a divorcing her. And here the God sends angel. Don't be afraid because what you're seeing right now, as messy as it looks, is a work of the Holy Spirit. As messy as it looks and out of control as it is, God is in control and He has a purpose and He has a plan for everything that we're going through right now. So Joseph was in a messy, out of control situation, yet God confirmed, don't be afraid because I'm with you. Don't be afraid for He's working supernaturally on the behalf of us in the midst of our confusions. Yeah. And I do believe God is at work in every situation. How messy it looks, I don't care, but I know for the sure that God. So in order to accomplish his plan and a purpose in our life, sometimes we need to trust things. We need to trust God who is working behind the scene when everything looks so messy. I just experienced something this afternoon that didn't make sense. I have to trust. I don't know what's going on, but I know God does. And I think that's how the God works, beyond yeah. our capability, beyond our understanding. So our uncertainty in fear of unknown, God wants to identify himself as Emmanuel, God with us. It means his presence is with us. In the meaning of the name Emmanuel, God with us, it is to the actual name of Jesus. And as we just read in the scripture, he The name indicates not just that Jesus himself was present to us. of continued presence of God with us. Just from our sin. So I need to say Jesus, he will save us from us. He need to be with us. to be what we fear for. So interesting, the same research I, just, I was reading in the article, this is a psychological research, also talks about the way of combating anxiety and the fear of unknown is, is to actually gain more information, to get more clarity about something you're fearing for. So to me, it actually said the only way that we can overcome fear of unknown future what God says about our future. Because God is all knowing God. Because we can't make sense of it, right? Too many wrong things to do. In the, in the life of Joseph that our future is not defined by our past. Right. Our future also is not defined by our current circumstance. Right. And it is not defined by my capability or my limitation. And our future and who we are is only defined by the truth. What God says about us and what God says about our future. 
So who this God says who we are and what he has said about our future. That's what we need to get hold of it in order to overcome the fear of uncertainty and fear of unknown future. So Jeremiah 29, 11, this is the statement uh, of our church, of Hope Church. God has a plan. God has a plan. God has a plan for each and every one of us. And he God is what, what may look Joseph's situation. It didn't look good to him. It wasn't actually. I want to get to be a father of the baby I had nothing to do with. <laughs> That's not really exciting, is it? No. Yet, God had a plan and a purpose for his life, and his plan was to good, to bring a savior of the world to yes. us. Right. And also, German 20 and 11 said, it's God's plan is not to harm us, but to give us hope in the future. And this is what we stand on here at Hope Church, believing each and every one of us has a purpose in God, and God has a plan. His plan is to give us hope in the future. Emmanuel, God with us, spells out all of that. God loves you. Jesus died for you. You are forgiving. God is with you, and His presence to be with you and he has a purpose and he has a plan for your life an unexpected event won't happen occurs in our life often when we are not ready for it I think when we're ready for it it, it often comes when we are totally off guard Something hit us and we are just totally paralyzed and dysfunction, go like But God has a plan. God has a purpose. Yeah. Even with any unexpected things that hit us in every day of our life. Just like a Joseph was hit by this news. Can you imagine? It actually the Bible doesn't say clearly, but can you imagine the conversation he had with Mary? They're about to get married. He's been waiting for the whole year of engagement. And the fiancé comes and, hey, I'm pregnant. <laughs> yeah, that, that was his life at the time. It was unexpected. Yeah. Unexpected. He was waiting for this special day to come. And finds his fiancé already pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, the Bible actually clearly does indicate he did not believe her story. That's why angel of the because he couldn't believe it that Mary was pregnant without another man being involved. So I want to look at the uh, three truths today out of the Bible that will help us to become more aware of God with us, his presence with us, unexpected event, and when we are experiencing fear of unknown. So the first one is nothing can separate us from God's love. Nothing. Romans 8, 29 to 30 says this. And he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the first one among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them. He called them means he invited them. He invited us to come. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. And it goes on to say in the verse 38, 39, And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God. Neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the power of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed. Nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. How amazing is that? Nothing. Nothing can separate us. Not even the power of hell. Nothing can separate us from the God's love. Uh, and when Paul wrote this, the believers were going through a hardship. They were actually facing a lot of persecution, imprisonment, illness, sickness, even a death. So Paul knew that those things, that persecution, illness, imprisonment, um, or facing a death, could cause their face to fail. Paul knew that it would cause them fear. Yeah. 
That's why he's writing to strengths the believers to say, remember, no matter what you face, nothing, nothing can separate you from God's love. God is with you. God is with you. He's not abandoning you. He is right here with you. Yeah. So this is also the reminder to us the strengths I face today. To be reminded, it is actually impossible. It is totally impossible for us to be separate from God's love. Because God gave everything on the cross. Jesus died on the cross. There's nothing more he can give. He gave everything he had for us. That's a great. There's no way left in that. And because of that, we can come to the uh, our creator. And he is not the father who is distant. If, if our Heavenly Father is so good, He gave His one and only Son for us so that we can come back to Him, He is actually not a distant Father. We may feel sometimes His distance in our confusions, in our fear, or maybe we had a bad experience with the Father figure that makes us believe the Father, but He's not. He is so close to us. Why? Because He says it in the name of Emmanuel, God with us. His closeness identify himself that he desired to be with us so nothing can separate us from his love that's the first truth that i want us to get a hold of it tonight and i think a difficulty sometimes is everywhere we look in every day of our life whether it's a tvs or movies or go to schools or work people are actually chasing and looking for love and acceptance it's all of us that's something god put it in us as a desire that's how we wired up is a lot of time without us being aware of, we're looking for the fulfillment love to be accepted in the wrong places. Actually fulfill that long that our deeper desire to be with God. Friendship is a blessing. Admit I can't do my life without my friend. Family is such a blessing. Uh, achievement in the works is great, but those things is not going to fulfill our deepest desire to be loved and accepted. Only us knowing that God's love, the perfect love, that he died on the cross for us, that we cannot be separate from his love. Right. That's the only truth that's going to truly satisfy our deeper desire to be loved and accepted. Yep. So God with us, he loves us, and... Uh, John 4, 9 to 10 also says this, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sin. The love of God compelled him the love of God towards us compelled him to act and respond to us. The love of God towards you compelled him to act and respond to you. That's why Jesus died on the cross for us. So the second truth I want us all to get a hold of tonight in order to um, have a better understanding of God with us is that there is a hope. God with us, this is actually a hope. God with us. This is our hope. Just Jesus came to take our sins away, to reconcile us to the Father. God with us. God's closeness speaks to the goodness of God. He is good. Is there sometime the, uh, in our life do you feel like God is not good? Is it just me? Yeah? You're all good? Like you always feel God is good? Well, I have experienced in the past when I went through something really hard in my family situation, or my health issues, I felt like God wasn't good. And I had to really combat that sort because what I was thinking and how I was feeling did not match up with the word of God, the truth. I was listening to the voice of lies trying to tell me God is not good about you. God has forgotten about you. But the truth tells me God is good. God's closeness, God with us speaks that his goodness and so when we focus on God's goodness, I believe the hope rises in our spirit. That's right. Because we understand God is good. 
So the hope rises in the spirit when there is no hope. And I believe the hope keeps us anchored in a situation when we don't understand. When we are fearful of unknown unknown situation, the only thing keeps us anchored sometimes, or actually understand that we have in God. Because when hope is lost, always lost. When we stop hoping, our faith doesn't grow. And I believe the hope is atmosphere, a very atmosphere.